They say it is apocryphal. We don't know if Tesla actually made the quote, but it goes, you will live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. I'm sorry, you may live to see man-made horrors beyond your comprehension. That's what he said. We have the story for you. First mouse with two biological fathers has its own babies in breakthrough that could pave the way for gay men to have children. They've talked about this for a while. The general idea is, uh, and this may be different, but the general idea in the past was, you take two dads, you take the gametes, okay, you got the sperms from the dads, you extract the genetic material from one, and you put it into the, and you remove the genetic material from the egg, and you put the male DNA in the egg, then two sets of male DNA make a baby. Now, I don't know if that's if that's actually what they did or exactly what they did here, but let's read the story. Daily Mail says, for the first time, mice born to two fathers have grown up and produced offspring. The researchers at Shanghai Jiaotong University managed to insert two sperm cells from each father into a mouse egg whose nucleus had been removed. You see? <laughs> a gene editing technique was then used to reprogram parts of the sperm DNA to allow an embryo to develop a process called androgenesis. Oh, heaven help us. <laughs> Oh, man. The embryo featuring the genetic material from two fathers was transferred to a female womb and allowed to grow to term. So technically, two dads and a mom. Right. Finally, the resulting offspring male managed to grow to adulthood and become a parent after mating conventionally with a female. In their lab experience, the research experience, the researchers managed to successfully demonstrate the method twice, birthing two fertile male mice, both with two fathers. The promising breakthrough could uh, could pave the way for two gay men to have a child of their own who can also go on to have a family. Yeah, the implication would be that after the male material is put into the egg, you need a female to carry it unless you put it in an inky bag. These they've got these plastic bags that can grow. They grew a sheep in it. Man made horrors beyond your comprehension. But let's be real. You guys comp comprehend all of this and exactly why it's happening. The experts have cautioned that there is still a way to go before any such procedures are attempted in humans. You know, it says these adult male mice, which each have the genetic material of their two fathers, have gone on to have offspring of their own. I have questions about this, to be honest. Uh, long term effects. What is missing that comes from the mom? So here's what they do. They say sperm is taken from one male and used to make stem cells. Scientists edit the genes of these stem cells using CRISPR. The sperm is taken from a second male. It's combined with an egg created from the genetically edited stem cells, and it produces healthy offspring. You know where this ultimately goes. They're trying to understand the code and mechanism of life itself. And then they're going to make themselves immortal and do all sorts of weird stuff. The curious the question I have with the end result of gene editing is we know that there are lobsters, for instance, are biologically immortal. They don't age to death. They just die because of accidents or we eat them. They get big. We eat them. But uh, there are jellyfish that have the ability to revert back to a larval state and then turn back into an adult. So they effectively are immortal as well. The function is possible. The question is, have they already or will they? understand these mechanisms and develop a technology by which they can start to de-age humans and create immortality. And if they did, are they going to tell you about it? Probably not. The, the, the joke conspiracy theory is that <clears throat> the global elites since like the 40s have just been, once they get old, they announce they've died, but then genetically engineer themselves to go back to their 20s, where they take roles as interns working for their buddies, and it's one big Illuminati. I don't actually think so. I think we'd know a lot more about this technology and there'd be a lot more developments before anything like that could really happen. They want to say in the study, we report the generation of fertile androgenic mice, the Chinese experts uh, published in PNAS. PNAS. That's the name of the publication. I kid you. I mean, everybody always makes fun of it. Our findings together with previous achievements of uniparental reproduction in mammals support previous speculation that genomic imprinting is the fundamental barrier to the full-term development of uniparental mammalian embryos. 
Experts caution that we are not ready to start such experiments in humans, which could be deeply unethical. I'm pretty, I bet they did it. You think China's playing by the rules? No, they just ain't telling you about it. Christopher Galashe, and, and the United States too, don't get me wrong. Christopher Galashe, research operations manager at the Sainsbury Welcome Center in London, points out that the success rate of the experiments was very low. Of 259 mice embryos that were transferred to female mice, just two survived. Holy crap! Grew to adulthood and then fathered their own offspring. This research on generating offspring from same-sex parents is promising. But it is unthinkable to translate it to humans due to the large number of eggs required, the high number of surrogate women needed, and the low success rate. Good God. Today, gay couples who want to have children usually rely on a surrogate mother or father to bring a child into the world. And the funny thing is, like when lesbian couples pay a dude for their for their spunk, the guys largely are uninvolved. But it's really horrifying when it's the other way around, because basically then a guy asks for a woman's genetic material and her body to create the baby for which her body nourishes and she carries. And then they pay her to take what is her biological child away from her. That's kind of crazy. It's it's a one thing if the dad is like, here's the material and just that's it. They're detached from it. It's bad. Don't get me wrong. But there is a big difference. They say, unlike with a pair of heterosexual parents, this means that one of the couple is not actually related to the child. So it's long been a dream for gay couples to raise a child who has genetic material from both fathers. Now, uh, question, what if you're lesbians? Can they take two eggs and then take the material from one of the eggs and put it in a sperm? I don't know. Just wondering. They say, back in 2023... Researchers revealed they've been able to create mice from two biological fathers for the first time. Because mice are actually genetically very similar to us, the promising result hinted the feat could be replicable in humans. But even if a, if a human child could be birthed from two fathers, it potentially threw a huge ethical quandary into the mix. What if that human child is not able to have children of their own through normal conception when they reach adulthood? Fortunately, these new experiments suggest that might not be an issue. The human-related to both of his or her fathers would grow up and be able to have a family of their own, the results suggest. I would also add, however, humans are substantially more complex in their mental and social functions than mice. It may be that, you know, we don't speak mouse, right? But human social structures are complex. A human being that is composed of two genetic trees from men, only men, like without the mother, may have some kind of social deviancy that we don't see because they're mice. That's why we do these things in scale. Uh, but what, what I'm saying basically is, what if these mice are in some way psychologically altered by this or functionally and socially different? And it might, what if it's noticeable to a human that we don't notice in a mouse? Now, the easiest thing is like, let's say sociopathy. What if there's a higher rate of sociopathy because using male genetics with no female component? What happens if they create two Y, if they take two Y chromosomes and put them together? I don't know how that works. I'm not, I, I don't do this stuff. Maybe that's not a thing. They want to say that during heterosexual reproduction, genetic material from a male is carried by the sperm and combines with the female. We get it. When this happens, a group of genes called hom hom homologous, is that it? homologous chromosomes from the mother come together with those of the father and combine in a process called crossing over. That seems kind of boring. But when bolts of hom homologous chromosomes come from either two males or females, the genes don't copy over properly, leading to imprinting abnormalities and developmental defects. That's why the researchers had to turn to gene editing, which makes tweaks in the DNA and target genes responsible for imprinting. Oh, this is creepy. Researchers are also considering this approach in larger animals like monkeys, but the technological hurdles will be significantly larger. Dr. Helen O'Neill, a molecular geneticist at the University of College London, called the new work a major step forward. It confirms that genomic imprinting is the main barrier to uniparental reproduction in mammals, and it shows it can be overcome. Okay, here's a question. What if they just take the genetic material from one guy? One guy, and they take different sperm, and they mix it together. What'll that do? Yo, this is crazy. Now, cloning can already be done. They can take your stem cells and just create a clone of you, but it's a baby. You know what I mean? It's not the same thing. 
They are questions. Is your mind the same? Is a new soul imprinted? What does it even mean? All of it's creepy. I'm going to wrap it up there, my friends. Smash the like button. Share the show with everyone you know. Stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all in the next segment.